Hey, this is Ronald from Mass Skills University. Today I want to show you how to edit your photographs in GIMP 3.0 RC. You can use an older version of GIMP, it doesn't matter. I'm not using any of the newer features anyway. But today I'm going to show you how to make your photographs look really cool. I'm going to show you a more intelligent quasi AI way to use GIMP to remove backgrounds and other objects from your photos, to blur your backgrounds, and a lot more. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started. If you use GIMP, a lot of you use different types of tools. A lot of people use the Pass tool to remove an image from a background. But today we're going to use what we call the Intelligence Select tool or the Scissor Select tool. And this used to be called the IntelliSelect Select tool because it has a little bit of AI in it. Let me show you what I mean. First thing you want to do is right click on your image, go down to Layers, and go down to Transparency. And add Alpha Channel. Then press I as an internet or select the scissors tool. And now we can zoom in on her and just start going around her hair. On like the paths tool, as you can see, it's going to try to make a good line for you. Let's go down her arm to her elbow. And here I can make smaller changes on the dots just to go around here like the paths tool. and you can make feathering and other changes here. This is a difficult picture to do because as you can see, there's not a lot of contrast between her white jacket and the background. Let's go around here and get to the top. To connect, go over to this dot where I started, that plus, as you can see, is going to change, or whatever that thing is, is going to change to a link. Now I can link that, press enter. If I press delete now, she'll be gone. Press control or command plus Z as in zebra. Now press Control Command plus I as an internet. Now press delete. Now she's there and the background's gone. If you want to export this, make sure you export this as a PNG file. So up here, you're going to change the extension to PNG. Otherwise, it will not be transparent. Well, I hope that helps you out. All right, let's move on. Here's a good tip on how to use the select tool a little bit better, but also how to quickly use that same method to blur out a background. Let me show you what I mean. Press I again, select tool. If I'm trying to turn a corner, hold down shift and now click. And it will give you more of a, a circular shape going around. If I want to change this line, what I want to do is click and hold and it should turn yellow. Now if I want to resnap it, it's going to resnap wherever I am on the line, as you can see. So that's how you can make changes. I didn't bring that up in the last video because the lines were pretty straight. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're trying to blur the background. That's all we're trying to do here. And what I'll do here is I'll make multiple anchor points just to get around a curve or a complicated shape. And again, I'm holding down shift here try to get more of a circle now here wait till you see the links the two chains or two links and then click now we can scroll back out now press enter again like we did last time so we have our marching ants if I hit delete now he's gonna be gone we know how that works right now press control or command I we're going to invert that then we'll go up here to filters come down to blur and go over to Gaussian blur I can make some changes here. As you can see, they'll start to affect the photograph automatically. We'll just stick with that for simplicity's sake. Now press Control or Command plus Shift plus A as an apple to deselect our subject. And that's what we have. A background that has been blurred out. Freckles are natural and they're attractive. But say if she had moles or big pimples she wanted to get rid of or this little indentation right here. What you want to play around with here the clone tool and the healing tool. So C or H, let's zoom in. So let's work with this right here. If I press C, I can take an area around this indention right here and cover it with that. I press control and I pick an area and then I, and I just kind of wipe over that area with that. And as you can see, it's easy to remove anything from someone's face. I can also go over here and do it. And then you can just keep going around like this you may not want that right there, but see how it's darker? So what you want to do now is press C again 
and then clone around that area so we get a better match. So let's press control and then let's try that. A lot better. Let's get these right up in here. Control and then just kind of drag along there. And that's a lot better. You can also use, of course, the H tool or heal tool. So let's go heal. And then let's zoom in about right here. And then I'm just going to do this. And one of them is going to copy another application one area of the or face the to the other face is to remove wrinkles from under people's eyes. So if I just press control or command and click around the area that I want to heal and then just stroke into that area or into the wrinkles here, I can do some photo retouches like this. And if you're trying to update your resume pic or your profile pic, then you can clean up and retouch areas around your face like this. And I'm doing this relatively fast, but you want to take your time. Just make sure that the area that you're trying to heal, you stay within that region. So you're going to use the clone tool and the heal tool to accomplish that. I have a more detailed photo retouching video in lesson number one and lesson number two in GIMP. If you want to check that out, I'll link those below. I'll link my entire GIMP playlist below. And at this point, we can take a look at her before and after. It's good for cold sores and blisters on the lips and things like that. The next quasi AI tool I want to show you in GIMP involves filters. If I go to filters, I can do blurs, Gaussian blurs, different things, cartoon image conversions. They're not AI, but they, I call them quasi AI, but you can do a lot of things. You can round the corners. You can make it a watercolor or oil painting. You can make it to an old photograph, for example. You always get these options, so I can change these and then press OK, revert that, and there you go. But here, mapping, if I'm trying to place somebody into a wall and make it look real, I can do things like displacement and bump mapping. So filters are something that you can use, and they do a lot of cool things to your photographs. So check all this out. Cartoon, let's bump some of this stuff up so we can really see the effects. So there's your cartoonish looking and you can change the parameters again. So you don't have to stick with whatever it gives you by default. Let's go up to color and come down to color balance. And I can do a lot of this stuff manually, right? Curves. We know what those are, but in the auto section, I can also auto equalize and color enhance. I can do a split preview. So here I can say, okay, this is what it looks like before and after. So I think we have some filters mixed in there, but I think you get the point. So go up to colors and just go down to auto. GIP is 100% free. You can do it runs on balance. anything. Linux, Macs, PC, old systems, the whole nine yards. If you like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any tips, ideas, suggestions, please leave them below. Thank you very much for watching. Until we meet again, have a great day. Peace.